You've probably seen functions before in your studies of mathematics, but defining a function is a surprisingly tricky business. Let's look at one possible definition of a function. If a and b are any two sets, then a function from a to b is a rule that assigns to each element of a exactly one element of b. So in this case, we are saying that a function is a rule. Okay, let's look at another definition and see uh, how that one compares. If a and b are two sets, then a function from a to b is a set f of ordered pairs in the Cartesian product of a and b with the property that for each element a in the set big A, there exists a unique element b in the set big B with the ordered pair a comma b being an element of f. So this is very different. This says that a function is a set of ordered pairs. So we had a rule, and then we have a set of ordered pairs. And these are both very common definitions of functions. Let's look at an example and see how uh, we would use each of these definitions. So let's suppose we have a set of numbers one, two, and three, I'll call that set A. And then I have a set of letters M, N, P, and Q, and we'll call that set B. Then I'm gonna let one be assigned to M, two be assigned to N, and three be assigned to Q. And this will be my uh, function f. And just so you know, another name for a function is sometimes um, called a mapping. And we might say that 1 is mapped to m, and 2 is mapped to n, and 3 is mapped to q. OK, so definition 1 says that we have a rule that assigns to each element of a. OK, well, here are the elements of a, and each element has something assigned to it. Uh, and it says it's a rule that assigns to each element of A exactly one element of B. In other words, we don't have, say, 3 being assigned to both P and Q. It's assigned to just Q. So this seems to follow the definition. So this would be a function according to the first definition above. The second definition, though, says that we think of a function as a set of ordered pairs. So how would that work? Well. Here would be a set of ordered pairs that would be the same as the function that I have pictured here. We have one that goes with m, two goes with n, and three goes with q. So in this case, we can see that both definitions really seem to make sense here. In practice, you can use either definition, and maybe it makes more sense to use one definition over another, depending on the circumstances uh, and the context of the problem, but they should both make sense. I have a little bit of notation that you probably should be familiar with. F with a colon from A to B indicates that we have a function that's mapping uh, things from the set A to things in the set B. And then Y equals F of X uh, is just another way of using function notation. Now in this case, this assumes that our variable here is X. Of course, you could have a function that has more than one variable or uh, you know, different, different types of variables. Uh, but uh, this is something that is common enough that you see when we have a function of x that you should be familiar with it. OK, so now let's look at another example. Suppose we let f be the function from the set of real numbers to the set of real numbers given by f of x equals x squared. And you know what this looks like. It's a parabola. looks like this, centered at the origin. And now I'm going to look at some things that are associated with functions, like domain and range and codomain and image. Now, you've probably heard these words before, but it turns out that it can be a little tricky to actually define them. Different textbooks use different conventions, and so we have to stick with one convention or else uh, things won't make sense here. So let's look at some options, and then I'll select one of the options. So first we have option one. The domain of this function is all real numbers. OK, that makes sense. That would be like this uh, first real numbers right here. And then the range is also real numbers. OK, that's like the second real numbers. And the image would be all real numbers greater than or equal to 0. And that would be because that's uh, that part of the y-axis that has something mapped to it. OK, so that's option one. Here's another option. The domain, again, all real numbers. But now we're going to say the codomain is all real numbers, and that's referring, again, to this second r right here for real numbers. And the range is all real numbers greater than or equal to 0. So now you see a bit of a problem here. In option 1, we said that the range was all real numbers. And in option 2, we're considering the range to be all real numbers greater than or equal to 0. 
So uh, we have to decide between these two, but wait, there's actually more options. Option three, the domain is all real numbers, the range is all real numbers greater than or equal to zero, and we will just refuse to give a name to this second set here, set B. Uh, we just won't call it anything. And this option is very popular with uh, analysis. If you were to take a real analysis class, this is probably the convention they would follow. But let's look at one more, option four. The domain is all real numbers, the codomain is all real numbers, so this would be saying that the domain, this would be our set A, this would be our set B, and the image is all real numbers greater than or equal to zero. This is the convention that I'm going to be using. Since we have to pick something, we'll pick this convention right here, and this is by no means the standard. Um, there, You'll see in different textbooks different conventions, but we have to pick something and stick with it, and this one seems to make the most sense to me. My advice, though, would be to check with your textbook or uh, if you're taking a course and professor is lecturing, to check and see the convention that they're using. Different textbooks, different people use different conventions. Okay, so let's formally define these things here. So let f be a function from a to b, and the set a we're going to call the domain of f. Now there's one other tricky thing here related to the domain. You probably have seen something like this before. Let's uh, define a function g from all real numbers to all real numbers, and we're going to say that g of x is 1 over x. Okay, so this is very common. You see this all the time in textbooks, but there's a bit of a problem here. If you remember our definition of a function, it said that it mapped something uh, from uh, each element a in a to something in b, but we have a problem here. What about g of 0. Where would that go? 0 is in the set A. It's in the set of real numbers. But g of 0 is 1 over 0. Well, we can't do that. So there's a bit of a problem there. So in this case, according to our definition, we would say that this is actually not a function. Now, unfortunately, you see something like this all the time. You see it in textbooks where functions will be defined. Uh, but there will be places in the domain where it doesn't make sense. And normally what you should do in a situation like that is, is just change the mapping here so that it does make sense. So in this case, what we probably should say is that g is not a function from all real numbers to all real numbers, but instead is a function from all real numbers excluding 0 to all real numbers. Notice that it's fine to have this set be all real numbers. Um, that's that's okay as far as the definition of our function. But this set, the set A here, would have a problem at zero. So technically we should write this as the set of all real numbers excluding zero. Next we have the codomain, and that's just the set B. And then the set F of A consists of the set of all the uh, F of little a's, where A is an element of big A, and that's called the image of F. And there's one more thing that you might see if we have a subset of the set A called A prime, then we can actually say f of A prime is the set of all of the f of little a's such that little a is a set as an element of A prime. In that case, we say that f of A prime is the image of A prime under f.